Can everyone hear me? Sounds like yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm Christopher. Like uh, he said, I'm from Shopify. Uh, we're a Canadian e-commerce company, uh, but we have people all over um, that work remotely. Um, yeah. Uh, so a couple things before we get started and I address the ridiculous title. Uh, so first of all, just in case at any point in the talk, I say the word I, I want you to hear we. Uh, I, I didn't do any of this uh, alone. So uh, there was a whole team and then like people even outside the team that helped. So this was a, a group effort. But anyway, um, so this title is, uh, has a lot of words in it, you may have noticed. Um, and the biggest problem is that it, it brings in two different kinds of people. Uh, there are people who have heard some of these words before and uh, would like to kind of get a sense of how these tools work and what they are um, in a context they understand, in this case Kafka. Uh, but it also, the other sorts of people are people who maybe have done this before and would like to see if we encountered some of the same problems or if we solved them in similar ways. Uh, or they got stuck at some point and wanted to know how we got past it. Uh, so unfortunately, 40 minutes is actually really short, and I can't do both. So the talk is predominantly going to be for that second group of people. Um, I'm going to have about 10 minutes where I introduce uh, the where I introduce the uh, concepts of Kubernetes, mostly defining terms and refreshing people if they if they already know it, and if they know similar systems, then they might kind of pick up on on the the specifics, uh, and then, but mostly I'm going to get into the meat of it because you can go read a Kubernetes tutorial, uh, tutorial online. Uh, and for online people, I recommend you go read about stateful sets now and then come back. Uh, <laughs> the next 10 minutes will be a bit of a, a refresher on that, but okay. Um, so, uh, so the first thing is definitions. So Kubernetes, uh, you may have heard of, uh, if you're here, and you may even not have. So Kubernetes is an abstract scheduler and orchestrator. That's basically its job. Um, there are others like it. Uh, Apache Mesos is similar, if I, I'm led to believe, though I haven't actually used that one. Uh, but basically, it solves the problem of, by the way, my timer hasn't started, in case that's a problem. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, it solves the problem of I have all these machines, and I would like to, and I have all this work that I want to do, uh, but I don't want to actually pick which machines do which work. I don't want to have web servers one, two, three, and Kafka brokers five, four, five, six, or whatever. I just have many machines, and I want to treat them all kind of uh, fungibly and then I want you to have the machine go put all the work on all the machines. That's basically its job. Um, some of the machines might have uh, different constraints. Some of them might ha be, have more RAM than others. Some of them might have more CPU. Some of them might have like a GPU or something. But, uh, but basically, I want you to take the work and then fit it everywhere that you can. Um, so this, this little part here is just basically going to be a quick introduction because I don't have time to go into it further. But hopefully, it'll be OK for everybody. Um, yeah. Okay, so the very first thing, and like I said, mostly this is going to be definitions. So the very first thing is nodes. Uh, Kubernetes calls the machines that you run things on nodes. These are the things that things get scheduled onto. Nodes. This is important. I'm going to say this word a lot. We're not talking about Kafka brokers. Nodes are the machines that things run on, unless I screw it up, in which case I might be talking about Kafka brokers. Uh, so these can be physical hardware in a data center or something um, that you're running machines on if, you, if you're running this. Uh, but it also could be VMs if you're running in the cloud or something. Uh, it could be some hybrid uh, system. Basically, these are things to be scheduled onto. Uh, and like I said before, they can have different uh, capabilities and configurations from each other. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with that uh, later. Um, the things that you want to run are called pods, which I've done by these pinkish circles. Um, actually, the contrast is not too bad on the slides. That's good. Uh, so, so basically, uh, these pods are the actual things that you want to run. Um, they can have different requirements. They can uh, have different amounts of RAM that they need. They can have different amounts of CPU. And then, uh, again, it's Kubernetes' job to fit them where there's still space onto the nodes. Pods scheduled onto nodes. Okay. Um, containers exist inside a pod. A pod is built of containers. Um, basically, the, the reason for this is that uh, Kubernetes schedules pods. Um, it schedules all containers from a pod together, because it doesn't schedule containers. It schedules pods. Uh, this can be useful. So for example, if you've got a Kafka broker, and you've got a thing that reads the JMX and reports metrics or something, um, they will always be together. Whichever machine they end up on, they'll be together. And uh, they also do things like they share a network space. So the, the metrics container can always refer to the Kafka broker as localhost. And even if there's six Kafka brokers on a machine, the one that I am associated with is always localhost 9092, for example. Um, 
And they can also share directories and stuff. You can poke holes through the uh, isolation that containers provide, uh, so long as they're within a pod, which can be super handy in a practical sense. Um, and like I said, they always end up on one node together. Um, yeah, OK. Uh, so if you've got all these things that run all over the damn place, and you, they get scheduled onto nodes, and you don't know which nodes they end up on, because that's the computer's job, you have to be able to talk to them somehow. The Kubernetes uh, abstraction for this is services. So I've got this uh, elongated teal box with some arrows. I'm actually pretty proud of this. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so basically, this is, a, is an abstraction. It has an IP and a DNS name within the cluster. And um, the pods are labeled. Uh, just with like tags, um, like app equals Kafka or whatever. Um, and a service has a selector, and basically it will find all of the pods wherever they're scheduled that, that match that selector, and it will uh, randomly load balance to them. So anyone who talks to the service will receive a, a pod that is ready wherever it is in the cluster. Um, so this is kind of how, uh, how Kubernetes uh, allows you, things to access each, each other as a kind of simple service discovery. There are other service discoveries that you can run in Kubernetes. Uh, I haven't touched any of those. But they, they are even a level above. Um, and then also importantly, if like this guy in the middle here were to suddenly, uh, if that uh, whole node were to go away and, and that workload were to get rescheduled onto a different one, um, work would not get sent there while it's down and then when it spins up, work would start getting sent there again. 